So far in our series, When the Earth Shakes, our environmental Northwest team has shown you how fault lines and subduction zones work. We've shown you how experts are working to track seismic activity around the region. And today, environmental reporter Kale Williams is taking us inside one of the biggest threats posed by earthquakes, tsunamis. This is uh, footage earlier on when the earthquake has hit. It's not a matter of if. You don't know when this is going to happen. <laughs> but when? It's just to get to high ground as soon as you can. Since January of 1700, tension has been building in the Cascadia subduction zone. That's where tectonic plates under the ocean are slowly sliding under the plate beneath the North American continent. And at some point, it's going to pop. Then one day it releases all that tension, all that stress is just released. The, the second plate lifts up, pushes the water out of the way, and that's what creates the tsunami. That's Dan Cox, professor of coastal and ocean engineering at Oregon State. And he said, you don't have to go back to 1700 to see what a tsunami would look like on our coast. I was actually in Japan after the 2011 tsunami, and I walked through uh, town after town. On March 11th, the magnitude 9 Tohoku earthquake shook the ground for nearly six minutes. Within half an hour, a wall of water washed ashore. Sea walls were easily overcome. Entire villages in the mostly rural areas were washed away. Combined, the earthquake and tsunami killed more than 18,000 people. And the damage there is probably going to be very similar to what we saw here for that magnitude 9. If the entire Cascadia subduction zone were to rupture, the ground on the coast is expected to sink by up to six feet. The following tsunami could see waves up to 40 feet high, and they could last for hours after the shaking stops. Many low-lying towns would be inundated. Parts of the coast I worry about is where the people are. That includes places like Seaside, Neskowin, and Warrington. The state estimates a tsunami could wipe out areas that are home to some 22,000 people. Wood frame buildings, you know, residential structures, houses, they really don't fare well. And so the expectation is most of them are going to get washed away. And estimated deaths from a Cascadia quake range as high as 10,000, with half of those caused by the tsunami. That would be extremely devastating. But there are people working on ways to lessen that death toll. So we test uh, extreme conditions, no tsunamis and, and storm surge and big hurricane waves. Pedro Lomonaco is the director of the O.H. Hinsdale Wave Research Laboratory at Oregon State. We are uh, really passionate on waves and how that works and coast, what we call coastal engineering. No? It's one of the largest and most advanced wave testing facilities in the country, home to a large wave basin and a long flume with a wave generator at the end. When we visited, a team of researchers from Louisiana State and the University of Hawaii running an experiment on how different types of debris behave in a tsunami. What kills you in a tsunami is the debris, not the wave itself. Each of those yellow blocks represents a 40-foot shipping container. And the metal rods, affixed with sensors to record the strength of impact, represent a building along the coast. Once the containers are set up... Okay, are you guys ready for me to run this wave? Yes, we are. The wave generator pushes a wall of water down the flume. And the containers, well, they crash right into the building. It may not look impressive, but when you imagine each of those blocks as a 40-foot container, it's easy to see the destruction tsunamis can cause. Ooh. And the data collected here has real-world impacts. These have the potential to change building codes on coasts and that type of thing. It already has done it. Lamonaco said results from similar experiments conducted last year have already helped change building codes around the country. To me, it's one of the fastest uh, answers that we have seen. No, normally, fundamental research is, takes years to trickle all the way to the building code. This case was really fast. Now, if you live on the coast, what happens in a lab on a college campus might not be all that reassuring. For those folks, Dan Cox offered some advice. Start making a plan now. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on where we are, till that first wave hits the coast. That means mapping out an escape route, as well as a plan to reunite with loved ones after a tsunami hits. And while there still is a lot of work to do, Cox said the Pacific Northwest is in a much better place than it was even a decade ago. When I was first here, there was like not even awareness of it. 
then it was like, well, we're aware, but we don't want to do certain things, and now it's like all options on the table. Let's try to figure it out. So yeah. it's, it's, it's been very, it took a little while, but I think people are like uh, really taking it to heart and try to figure it out. Kale Williams, KGW News. And to see all of our stories in our When the Earth Shake series, text the word shake to the number on your screen right now. That's 208 321 5614. Do you remember the big earthquake we experienced in March of 2020? Well, scientists have recently learned how and where it happened. Tomorrow on the News at 4, join us with meteorologist Sophia Bliss to see what the scientists learned.